Hi, my name is Dr. Titus Schlager, and I'm Associate Professor and Director of the Center for Dental Informatics at the University of Pittsburgh School of Dental Medicine. I would like to introduce you today to a research project we have been pursuing for some time. It is called the Dental Information Model, or DIM for short. Why did we start this project? As you may know, dentists often record information, whether on paper or the computer, in idiosyncratic ways. For instance, one dentist may write, chief complaint broke off left front tooth, while another may write, patient's problem fractured number nine. To us, these two things may be equivalent, but to a computer, they're not. As a result, dental record keeping is highly individualized. This works fine as long as the only person who needs to access the data is the one who produced the data. However, it's difficult for other dentists to access or understand that information. This is important when we talk about exchanging information among patients and other healthcare providers. In addition, it is hard to reuse the data for research and quality improvement. So, we're sitting on a lot of valuable data in dental offices, but we can't make any use of them. So, what can we do about this problem? In order to help computers understand what humans mean, we need to give them very specific data that are unambiguous. So, no matter what humans call the patient's current problem, the computer must always understand it as the chief complaint. Let me explain what that has to do with the information model we are developing. An information model is a way of hierarchically organizing information into ever more granular categories. For instance, with respect to a dental record, one of the top level categories might be comprehensive patient history. That may include patient medical history, dental history, and medication history. Medication history might go all the way down to medications. But an information model can't exist all by itself. It needs to be combined with a terminology model. The terminology model provides the values for the fields in the information model. So for instance, the field medications must be able to list different medications that the patient takes. Those values might be provided by the terminology model. A third model that is needed to structure and represent information in patient records is the inferencing model. Inferencing models specify relations between items in the information model and allow computers to reason about them. To develop an information model for general dentistry, we took several steps. First, we conducted a study of the format of paper and computer-based patient records. In that study, we cataloged all fields of the records we examined, eliminated the duplicates, and called the resulting collection of fields the baseline dental record. We found two main things. One, aside from a few fields that occurred in almost all or all patient records, there was a lot of variation among the fields we found in the records. Second, some fields that were very common in paper records, for instance the chief complaint, were very rare or absent in computer-based patient records. We then went one step further. In a follow-up study, we obtained the identified patient records from a random sample of 10 dentists in the United States. We extracted all concepts we found and ended up with a raw list of 1,500 data elements. We then reviewed that list and eliminated closely matching or duplicate items. The resulting list of 1,100 elements was subjected to a filtering process. This filtering process was a Delphi study in which 22 practitioners, researchers, and educators reviewed each element and voted on it. As a result of this process, we decided which elements should be retained and which not, and which ones should be mandatory or optional. We then structured the resulting list of data elements into a preliminary information model. We called it the Electronic Dental Information Model. Today, we have abbreviated that to DIM, Dental Information Model. Let me give you a brief tour through a portion of the model. Here you see the top level categories of the model. We made the model compatible with the ANSI ADA specification 1000 
standard clinical architecture for the structure and content of an electronic health record. This is where the leftmost four categories come from. Within our information model, you see a number of categories, such as comprehensive patient history, problem list, and diagnosis. Let's take a closer look at the comprehensive patient history. Under the comprehensive patient history, you see five more categories. Let's focus on the medication history. Within the medication history, you see current medication, among other things. Once you click on current medication, you see a list of fields, such as current medication status, which indicates whether a patient is currently taking one or more medications, prescribed medication name, and drug dosage. These are the actual data fields in the information model. So you can see that the information model is a hierarchical, increasingly granular way of organizing information. Incidentally, the data fields, such as prescribed medication name, or where the terminology model comes in. The terminology model would provide the values that could be stored in that field, such as penicillin VK, Tylenol 3, and codeine. So, what can you do with the information model? First of all, you can design forms regardless of the medium. Second, the information model can function as a blueprint for designing dental systems databases. Further, it can be used to develop user interface designs. One very exciting usage scenario is the ability to exchange data between systems by mapping the respective databases to the information model. This can happen both in point-to-point -point exchanges as well as in the context of the National Health Information Infrastructure or Health Information Exchanges. Lastly, one could use the information model to populate research data forms. We are working on a project to do that within the context of the NIDCR-funded Practice-Based Research Network Initiative. So, where do we go from here? Our research group is currently working very actively on further developing the model. We're looking for use cases on potential applications. In addition, we're looking for individuals to help us refine and augment the model. In the end, we are hoping for broad adoption, so the model can help improve how we document patient information, how we exchange it, and how we use it for research. I would like to thank you for your attention. If you're interested, please join us. To do so, please email me at titus at pit.edu. Thank you very much.